Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on Extra Dark Room's content. Today, we are going to be watching the three new FNAF timeline theories by MatPat of the Game Theorists. Oh boy. I'm excited for this. <laughs> Uh, as you know, I'm Inky, we've got Ozone, Underscore cannot join us today, but we're ready to watch some interesting ideas. Oh, oh no, so, no. I'm, I'm very concerned for what this video is bringing I'm up. not, because I've honestly, I feel things. like, I, I like what Matt's doing with the, the three theory, like, yeah. one, because I don't think he's saying, like, this is what I believe as 100% canon, I think these are just, like, ideas that he's throwing out there. Yeah, yeah exactly. I was gonna say that as well, I'm cutting him some slack, because obviously he's just doing ideas at this point. And if you think about it from his perspective, like, actual, thought-out, full-fledged FNAF theories just kind of don't cut it anymore, because they take a long time to make, True. and by the time it's out, it's usually outdated. And people disagree with it. There can be like one or two things that just make the theory crumble. So that's a lot of work just mm -hmm. gone. So having these three mini theories that are just more ideas makes a lot more sense. And obviously, I don't blame him for that, even if the ideas are absurd. Um, it's the just only the problem. Take it too literally. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I. Yeah. We're all on the same page here. Yeah, we're all on the same yeah. page. People believe it. All right, guys, yeah. ready? People we, will believe yeah. it because because it's Matt Pat. So we can so start let's get it? into it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna hit the play in three, two, one. All right, new Five Nights at Freddy's book drop. Let's see what's new to talk about in the world of oh, FNAF. Readers uh -oh. where you're in for a scare. When Fazbear Wait, I haven't read it yet. the most twisted creation yet, sea bonnies, small blue fish with rabbit ears. When Mott drinks a tainted glass of water, tremble as they multiply inside his stomach and steal his identity. One cloned human Is made this up of spoilers? thousands of little blue bunny fish. Matt, Pat, did you spoil the book? No, I don't think so. No, no. I mean, that's that vague enough. Yeah, I it, hope it's not about friendly Welcome to game I, It better not be. Show that asks, <laughs> have you signed my petition to make me the host? Oh my gosh! I just need about 80,000 more signatures to get to our goal. And whether or not you know or even care I mean, what I is, just know that your signature luck. on that petition is a way to help support me getting to live out a childhood dream of mine. Well, also just a huge vote of support to all of your favorite digital creators who often get overlooked and tossed aside by mainstream media. As a great example of that, our petition when it crossed 200,000 signatures in a week got covered by one blog. Huge shout out to Newsweek. Thank you for recognizing a digital creator's value in the world. Meanwhile, an older school celebrity whose petition took nearly a year to get to the same place got tons of articles all over the place. Just saying, iniquity in this space is a real thing. Anyway, it's not like I'm going to be leaving Yikes. channels or anything like that if anything mm -hmm. were to come of this. So if you have any questions, those are all answered down in the description along with the link so you can go and sign it. Push me over the goal. All right, I now stop self-promoting. again. Get to the haunted bear! I know you guys are. I'm, I'm ready for Freddy. <laughs> Ozone's ready for Freddy. People's throats until they start to listen. Anyway, thank you so much for your support. Now on to FNAF. You know the phrase yeah. "jumping the shark"? It dates back to an episode of the classic series Happy Days, which aired in the mid '70s and early '80s. This show crushed, running for 11 seasons and staying as a top five most watched show Where is this for going? straight years. People I don't loved know. this thing. I anyway, like. The show, though, I remember seeing three. some of it when I was younger. Of the show's fame, they do a special series of episodes where the characters all take a trip to Hollywood, and the cool guy in the show, the Fonz, Fonz. <laughs> I remember challenged to him. test his bravery by jumping over a shark on water skis. This better, be not, this <laughs> better not be about uh, sea bonnies. Wind trunks and no. trademark leather jacket. If it was not, a moment I will that mute was the so video. ridiculous, so over the top, and so dumb that it single-handedly created the phrase that would forever after be used when a series loses all of its sense. At this point, FNAF, it's jumped all the sharks. Just a big old shark sandwich. Giant. Okay, Why did he use that? That's, that's, that's where he's going, going with more it. More sharky would be if yeah. it suddenly introduced a shark animatronic. They haven't. They haven't done that yet. Right, right. Five knots at shark. They have the mouth. guppies getting dangerously close. Just saying. But no seriousness over him. Wait, he actually the doesn't know. Right series is just released. Mm -hmm. penultimate I thought he was gonna have Felix the shark show up. Like, weird, ding. tiny rabbit guppies that steal your identity. A pink substance called Fazgu that hunts you down and I steals don't. your identity. Animatronics that body swap you in order to steal your 
identity. Huh, there's a definite pattern in these stories, isn't there? Could animatronics mm, identity stealing identities theft. and humans not actually being themselves be somehow identity important theft. to the lore of the series? <laughs> certainly seems like the books are beating that point over our heads. And honestly, this points to a larger trend here. For as crazy as these stories have gotten, and believe me, they've really gone off the rails at this point, there's definitely mm -hmm. still merit in them from a lore-solving perspective. Uh, because, as I'm about to show you, for every story about underwater rabbit guppies swimming around in your insides, there's another one or two that get you asking brand new questions about both the past and future of the franchise. Is so go so? ahead, take a break from eating your best friend that happened to fall into a vat of pizza sauce, something that, yes, also kind of happened in one of these stories, and consider the following <laughs> three theories ripped straight from the pages Yeah, of not really. Theory number one, Chica started as a medium what? reality. In Fazbear Fright's book yeah, number I don't nine, think the so, no. Carver, we're told a story <laughs> Let's of hear about the manager of a failing pizzeria named the Pizza Playground. Yeah, it's not actually a Freddy Fazbear establishment. Bro, that's they my favorite that's pizzeria, not Fazbear's. Detail, since every other pizza place in the Fazbear Frights book series has tied back to Freddy's in Where some way. Where is he going with this? Some reason, I don't know. I have a feeling this is going to be a, a very strange the pizza episode. Is the restaurant because Cake Patch is in Puppet Carver, right? right? Yeah, breaks down not Chica. <laughs> These things are straight up busted. The roster includes a banjo strumming country pig, a bear creatively named Baron Von Bear, two other unnamed creatures that have already broken down, and a, quote, weird bird thing. Now, if the words That's banjo not necessarily pig don't Chica, jump out though. to you, well, congratulations. Like... You have a richer and more fulfilling life than I do, because when I hear that phrase, my mind immediately jumps to one thing. The mediocre melodies. The crew of broken no animatronic bird. rejects able to be purchased way back in the Is he gonna try and throw in a fun time Chica? A crew of animatronics consisting of a banjo playing pig, That's a good point, an off-brand Freddy Chica. Fazbear ripoff with a southern accent named Ned Bear, a talkative hippo, a cute young frog, and an overdramatic elephant. They're characters that we all brushed off at the time because they just seemed unaffiliated with I anything mean, Fazbear. They're kind of filler. And then so. they came back, returning an ultimate custom night where they collectively gave voice to Cassidy, the one you should not have killed, as evidenced by voice lines like this. Everyone like that's their only purpose, though. That's the like, thing. Boo. And they're like, what? <laughs> uh, sorry, queued up the wrong clip. It's this one. This is how it feels. And I was about to say, I don't remember that. <laughs> over and over, I will never. Let you, leave. you know, it suddenly occurs to me that maybe they were the ones that had to be Cassidy's voice in this game because he's a spirit who's trapped inside Golden Freddy, a Springlock suit who was never actually given. You said a Cassidy as he though. Yeah, yeah what? The series was given a voice at least at some point. Just a thought that I had random. Because like you know, it's... I was rereading these lines. I don't, also, I don't know where this is going. He has a guy inside of him, so interesting. Anyway, the mediocre yeah, melodies, a generic what? Freddy, <laughs> a country. I still don't know where this is going. Yeah, same. Unnamed other characters that break down free. Frequently. It seems like Pizza Playground's animatronics are indeed the mediocre melodies. I would agree. Out but where's Chica? <laughs> thing being part of the band particularly interesting. Was Chica uh, it's a bit originally of a, a mediocre melody? Chica no. has always been a bit Wait, of an it could have been Blackbird. She's the only one to go Maybe, missing for a game, specifically in Sister Location, when she's the only one of the core four to because, not appear. Wait, so because and she's not in Sister Location, she must be a mediocre melody? Chica's I don't like that logic. was listed in the source code as a separate establishment away from Circus Baby's entertainment and rentals. We also yeah, know that Freddy fair, and that's, Bonnie that's have been kind together since point, their literal I golden still days, believe that. which means that Chica had to have been a later addition to the crew. Maybe she was with another band of animatronics the entire time. But the and mediocre melodies, the there's no evidence of them the existing before Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Something about chicken animatronic like wearing a bib just later. fits better alongside a farm-themed banjo pig and bear with a southern drawl. Kinda makes that's you wonder conjecture, where though. That's an opinion. Comes in now, huh? Anyway, the reason I bring all of this up is that for a long time, I've suspected that Chica is the key to the whole timeline of these games. What? Huh? Literally had to <laughs> what? Because of the because of the voice lines in Ultimate Custom Night. But like going from the lineup seems important, but until now, I've never had enough dots to put together in a timeline. We've known like, for a long time that she was the first why? Kid stuffed with the little. The missing Susie. children's incident was in 1980. Chica. <laughs> okay, I can see that. And now this story potentially connecting her to the mediocre melodies is yet another piece of evidence that we can use. So if you ever see a video titled "Follow the Missing Chica." You'll know that we finally figured it out. Theory number two, Balloon Boy solves a lot? Huh? Oh boy, it's time I talk about him. I don't know if you've noticed this, but- Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's pause a second and talk Balloon about the first Boy? theory. Yeah, what about the first theory? Is this? Oh no. The first theory because... is- Hey, Chica, she, uh, you know, in my opinion, Chica, you know, she's a bird, uh, and she's weird, uh, even though she has existed since the beginning and was part of the original group. So there's no evidence that she would be an oddball at all, and she wasn't in sister location, 
Uh, but she was at Chica's Party World, which I guess means she's a mediocre melody now. Oh boy. I actually, although it, there's like no evidence to back it up, I like the claim that uh, Chica's Party World was like associated with the fun with the mediocre melodies. See, like, it I, gives them purpose. The thing is, like, I while, I think the, while it's completely yeah. like weird and random. Yeah. There's no. The there's thing no, is, yeah, the thing is, at all. Like, Chica and Susie have been like the ones that we know the most about. Randomly, like it's so true. random. I don't know. And and Chica's never been like separated from the main crew, except in sister think. location, which is in, except earlier in sister location. In but the like, timeline? I don't know. Saying saying that it, she was it's saying, earlier or later. Yeah, but saying mm -hmm. that Chica was originally a mediocre melody before the main cast. Uh, There's no. It's a it's a good thought. Said, no evidence Ozone, to back it up. Yeah, Ozone, you said it. You like the theory because it gives the mediocre melodies a bit more purpose. But I mm. think that their purpose really is to show that in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, you don't start off with full fledged animatronics. You have to start with the bootleg stuff. Like they're supposed to be just like true your 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 bootleg animatronics basically. All so right. having Chica be part of that, even though she's a main integral part of the cast, I, I'm not seeing it. All right, yeah, let's, that's very true. Ten minutes left. We should probably continue. Yeah, let's keep going. This, I assume, is about Sergio's lucky day. Not a single yeah. theory dedicated to that guy. Go back and check me on that, but I've intentionally avoided him, largely because he doesn't fit anywhere. His design I mean, is different. He talked about he talked about Balloon Boy once about being be part of Sister Location before. Yeah. And yeah. Honestly, I've just never had a good sense of what to do with Balloon Boy in the lore of this franchise. Until <laughs> the box. Today, he didn't. He didn't really need to fit in. The mediocre though. melodies. We're yeah. introduced to Porter, the handyman who's supposed to be in charge Wait, of the animatronics. What? But Porter dreams of bigger things. You see, he's a he's gonna try and connect Balloon Boy to and his plan Puppet Carver to and not Sergio's Lucky Day. Transform it into something alive. To quote from the story, I'm almost finished with the prototype of my machine. It will create low cost but highly functional huh? electronics made from only an Where is this going? slab of wood. And not only is this guy a genius, he aspires to greater things. Quote again. Once I get a patent on my invention and find a buyer, but... I'm gonna be out of here so fast I'll leave a dust trail. I mean, taking wood and imbuing it with the ability to move on its own. Yeah, I'd but, say that's but Balloon be Boy's not made of wood. Here's the thing. It works. In the story, we see I'll tell you who is made of wood. Woodland Toy Freddy. No! Remnant or no, okay, but it like... It's a switch on its back, and it just comes to life. They describe it as resembling the drawing models from high Yeah, it, it's, class, it just looks like a big mini arena. That not Balloon Boy. Put the figure in a fuzzy suit, it would resemble a bunny or a fox or a bear, and you'd have a low-cost animatronic. In short, it feels like this story gives us a lot. First, reading the story felt like reading Henry's origin, a brilliant creator and animatronic inventor. Just I wouldn't for a say that. Maybe I mean sure, career, a but buyer maybe eh. William Afton seems to me that Henry was a college engineer with a great idea, and his earliest experiments were in the. This form is of heavy speculation, but this, I mean, if it's a, it, it's basically a headcanon, so like arena. it doesn't matter. Remember, the book described his wooden puppets as resembling the drawing models from high school art class, which, if you're not familiar, are these guys. That is why we have so many living dolls wandering. Which looks nothing like them. That oh, don't seem to have yeah. spirits inside no. of them. Only able to say basic words like hi, hello. In short, Balloon Boy isn't an animatronic, or at least not in the way that we all consider animatronics as mm. you know, living robots with dead children souls trapped in them, infused with remnant, all that good stuff. Taking it one step further, this might even have timeline implications. Wooden dolls appear in pretty much all the games currently thought to be the earliest in the timeline. FNAF 2, of course, with Balloon Boy, but also very heavily in sister location. On the main console, there's a marionette named Little Joe, a doll named the Magician, a gypsy figurine, and a series of human heads. Ennard's mask, Music Man, the mini arenas, Baby, Ballora, even the puppet's face all seem to stem from this era of Henry's creations. It seems to me that the wooden dolls and marionettes were all designed as he was trying to develop the look and feel of the Funtime animatronics, leading okay, up to but... the eventual opening and immediate closure William made the, of Circus Baby's the fun time. Yeah. As a reminder, Baby's Pizza World has never actually <laughs> After robotics. In Rather, we After know that robotics. it exists based on hidden website text and then mm. it was closed down due to a quote, I would I was agreeing with it until then for because, yeah. by baby and the like having the mini arenas be like 
early creation of the simplicity, simplicity actually made a little bit of sense, rentals. but the only game that happens earlier but than these no. two is currently FNAF 4. And wouldn't you know it, that's also the only one without a Balloon Boy appearance. Or rather, a questionably canon appearance since Nightmare Balloon Boy was in it briefly as part of the Halloween update. Long story short, perhaps the appearance of Balloon Boy and the other wooden clown-faced characters marks the start of William and Henry's partnership. I know a lot of people tend not to believe me when I say that a lot of evidence uh, Again, that's a bit of a stretch, I think. Timeline, but I think all of this is yet more fuel. So he's actually recognized it. Let's wait. I'm going to pause it. Number three, William Afton. Um, oh, whoops. What the? Well, I think it jumped a bit. No, uh, but <laughs> I, I noticed William that Afton the note. Is a step. I, I think I noticed <laughs> that uh, at the top he said that the creation of those animatronics is early, but that game's events are actually later. So it's interesting that he doesn't think it's uh, all before FNAF 2 anymore. True. True. Listen, on my so screen, like, on my there screen, there are a few subtle things that, like, he seems to be actually like getting a few more things right, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, it's in the midst of these crazy ideas. <laughs> Hold on, listen. On my screen, all I see is William Afton is an S, and I just want to know what that. Oh, oh I, I know what it is. I, 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 I see William Afton. I see William Don't... Afton is a step. Is this... I see William Afton is a step F. So I already know. What a this stepfather. Is. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm. Hang on, hang on. What? I just want to. It's because of the Lewis that... guy in. Uh, in <laughs> okay. Wait. And what's it called? What? What? Is, I, just, I just want to say that I'm all of this came. I just want to say that all of this came from the puppet carver story, which is a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, uh, puppet carver for a few seems reasons. Like the least connected. <laughs> yeah, that that's true, but also. I think the puppet carver was supposed to talk about other things, like completely different, like yeah. about Fazgu and replacing yeah. humans and things like that. It's I don't understand. I don't know if we can make connections like this. Yeah, it's it's more wild connections based on hey, this kind yeah. of reminds me of this, so let's see how it works. But again, they're just ideas. So yeah, yeah. what is the name of the? Why am I blanking so hard on the name of the third story in Gumdrop Angel? What we found. What we found, yeah. that's it. This is gonna be about what we found. Probably. But then again, we thought uh, we thought the Balloon Boy one was gonna be about Sergio's lucky day. <laughs> and, it, and it was not. So, who knows? Let's let's get back into it. Did it skip at all, or...? Uh, no. We're just gonna okay. move on to Theory 3. Beginning observation that a huge number of Fazbear Fright stories have a theme of identities being stolen. At this point, it appears once yes. in every book. The other mm -hmm. massive theme that keeps recurring in these tales are single-parent households. Dads abandoning the family and just I would agree with bad this. dads. Lots and lots of bad fathers. It's, I'd say this one is book, pretty much that one's... 24 stories feature a single-parent home. Just to run through some quick examples, in the book Step Closer, there are two stories that have a dad up and leave the family. 1.35 a.m. is about a foster child that had an abusive foster dad. The new kid, another abusive dad who left. The Cliffs is about a single dad losing a son. Breaking Wheel has the character Reed who has a single dad who's quote, trying his best. And in the short story, What We Found, which is basically just a retelling of FNAF 3, Hudson loses his father when he takes his own life on account of mental illness, only to wind up with Lewis, yet another abusive stepfather. To me, yeah. this is not a coincidence. It's the books yet again trying to point our attention to a common theme. I do agree. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know, I don't know if it's pointing that he's a stepfather. Particular. At this point, I believe it's referencing sure William. The guy but... from the FNAF 6 minigame Midnight Motorist is Purple Guy, who is also William Afton. And we see that he's far That's a good from point, a caring actually. and passionate Midnight father. Motorist. Banging on doors, yelling at his son, making threats. Shock of all shocks, a guy who moonlights by kidnapping kids and running experiments on their remnant soul juices and a father you want to go into the backyard and play catch with. Whoa, who would have saw that one coming? But the fact is, the Crazy, books seem to be alluding to another layer in this, mm -hmm. that he isn't actually crying child or Elizabeth's biological father. It would explain explain why Baby in both the Silver Eyes trilogy and Fazbear Frights feels a cold distance from her dad. Not just huh? that he's lost in his work, but that he's not interested in her outside of what she can do for his experiments. That might be why he actually prefers Henry's daughter to his own. It might also explain Afton's relationship with the crying child. How we've suspected for a while that Afton might have been running experiments on him, torturing him with animatronics and supervising him with surveillance cameras from his underground office. Taking it one step further, remember that story of Hudson whose dad took his own life? 
life, well, Henry in both Silver Eyes and FNAF World is shown to take his own life. Well, and I don't, Hudson I don't know if, Fazbear I don't think exactly uh, that desk guy is Henry Afton. anymore. I don't so think. could Michael Afton have started as Henry's son, only to wind up as William's stepson? Think back to the sister location cartoons. Clara, the baby isn't mine. An undying vampire in purple repeatedly saying, he's not my son, in between every night of that game. I mean, it is a big swing when it comes to theories, okay. but I think there's at yeah. least some interesting parallels there to consider. Supporting this, we said parallels. any adult females in the Afton house. Parallels. Now, I've speculated that Ballora's song is about a wife leaving her husband when he can't escape his own grief, but who knows? That song could be related to Henry's grief at the loss of his daughter, Charlie. In the original novels, we're shown that Charlie dies, and that Henry loses his mind with grief, leading him to eventually take his own life. What if the line about an empty tomb isn't William's sadness, but rather a song about Henry's? And that in the aftermath of his death, his kids go to William, his partner. Oh yeah, speaking of Charlie, did you know that the puppet's name officially was Coils the Clown for a while? It's true. What? Story what? Uh, no. what? No! 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 Like no. 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 It has long arms, three fingers, and a face that looks like a crescent moon that turns upside down when it's sad. And just like the security no. puppet in the game, Coils the Clown is canonically responsible for what about Ennard? Looking for intruders and getting sad. What? The, the, the puppet has nothing again, to do like with yellow and green with stripes. The books, there's definitely some changes that have been made, but the what? thought of the puppet having an actual name and that name being funny no. like Coils the Clown. Made what? Even though it was a small. It's not. Well, that's not, it's not even a clown. To chew on down in the comments below and on the Game Theory subreddit. Man. Read that I will be reading all of your thoughts, so make sure you keep them coming. Oh no. Two massive lore revelations. I'm hey, they sorry, were but I no. These people were calling no. out and thinking about. And all of this is without even mentioning... I'm going to leave another comment and just watch it go breach. viral. I mean, have you seen the new images? <laughs> so remember when you guys said that you weren't scared of this? Oh my gosh! Okay, <laughs> that, that's, it's funny because the actual theories he proposes aren't that bad. It's just other things that he brings up that just end... Oh my yeah. gosh! And he's just so and casual then, about it! <laughs> yeah, the worst okay, part about okay, that is that he, he brought it up as a fact. Let's uh, yeah. Let's slow down. Let's slow this down. So oh my gosh. the theory that William Afton is a stepfather. What do we think about that? I think it's the best one of the video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do I. Um. Definitely the uh, immortal and the restless. I. I could. I would say before. I just thought. I thought of it as William's view of Mike. How maybe he was an accident and he doesn't want to like claim responsibility for Michael, so he's claiming that it's not his son. But. It could actually be literal. You never know. Hmm. So, yeah. definitely the strongest one, um, but then he just goes, Hey guys, by the way, the puppet was Coils in the Cloud. Can we back up to that part real quick? I'm gonna back up. No, here. I don't want to, Psych. I want to! That's one of the funniest quotes <laughs> I've ever heard in one of these videos. Oh, and uh, by the way, I not the puppet the way. was also called Coils the Cloud. It just has no... I like how they whatsoever. actually, like... They actually like Photoshop oh. in the green and yellow lines. Like, hey, color change. Look, it's canon now. So, to anyone watching who doesn't really understand this, uh, we believe the coils to be like a previous version of Ennard, or that at least where Ennard's mask came from. Because right? of the hat. All right. Because of the hat, which is green yeah, and yellow. Charlie, did you know that the puppet's name officially was Coils the Clown for a while? Did you no. know? <laughs> did you know? See, that's like he's saying it like a fact, but he just yeah. interpreted it wrong. Oh my gosh, I I'm missed stuck. the play button. I, oh, to, no, I, I, no, I, I didn't mean to go back. I missed start. the play button. Sorry, I messed up. My gosh, like Matt Pat, buddy, you can't just go around. Oh no, man. I'm sorry, but oh man. Uh, in the story Jump for Tickets, we're introduced to a character named Coils the Clown, who quote has a lanky body with lemon and lime stripes. It has long arms. But those lemon and lime stripes are added in, right? Yeah, they don't exist. Yeah, they do I was not exist. Say, he he points them out. He like makes them glow in the edit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're it, just not there. They're just they just don't exist. And it's not just the script. The editors uh, had to. I mean, like, no shade on them. They're doing what they're told, but they had to actually Photoshop that in with, with like, with, and like, they had to have looked at an official puppet model to do that. Yeah. So, did they at any point go, wait a minute, this doesn't have lemon and lime stripes? 
All right, let's let's, let's, let's finish true. let's finish the video. Let's finish the video. Again, let's finish the video. Thing with all the books, there's definitely some changes that have been made, but the thought of the puppet having an actual name and that name being funny like Coils the Clown made me pretty happy, even though it was a small thing. So there you have it, friends. Three more theories to chew on down in the comments below and Man. on the easier subreddit. You can bet that I will be reading all of your thoughts, so make sure you keep them coming. Oh, I don't no. know if any of these will lead to massive lore revelations, but hey, they were things that I thought were at least worthy of calling out. I just and Something. And all of I'll this is without after. even mentioning the stuff that's happening around security breach. I mean, have you seen the new images coming out of their secret websites? Pretty terrifying stuff. Still early days to be sure over there, which is why I didn't want to comment on any of that yet, but you can bet that we're starting to get close to the actual release of a game in this game franchise. FNAF season is upon us yet again, and finally I'll have a game to talk about rather than more books. So stay safe and watch out for any misfiring animatronics tied to security databases. In the meantime, Remember, it's all just a theory. Oh, just okay. the senpai. <laughs> that's a, that's an image. You know, we joke about okay. it a lot. Of... Okay. Okay. That, that's it. It's probably, um, probably a sponsor segment after this. Just one oh, more gosh. thing about the puppet. One more thing about the puppet. Wasn't the puppet built by Henry to protect his daughter or something? I mean, probably, yeah. Because the security but guys, puppet, right? The security, he showed, he showed security. But, but the security, security puppets, puppet it looks for a green wristband that's green. We're just missing yellow. No. Oh, I hate no, you. No, no, no. Okay, I guys, we I don't know why we're here. We haven't, the video, we, we haven't even stopped recording yet. Real time, I'm going to the video, and I'm going to make a comment, and I want everyone to find it and like it. I'm getting back on game theory. They that's can't stop idea. me. That's a good idea. I'm... I'm and then, and then they'll, tell him, tell him to listen to the Dark Rooms podcast where we talk about these yes. really well. Yes. With, with oh really yes. He's gone. He's gone too debates. far. We have to. We have He's to do that. He's gone too far. We have to do that. <laughs> Note yeah. for. Oh gosh, like. Just say hey, Matt Pat. Lots of things that Note I just agree. Matt Pat. Map. I accidentally typed a map tap. <laughs> map tap. <laughs> map tap. Note for Matt Pat. Uh, please read. Coils the Clown <laughs> is most likely <laughs> not the puppet. Oh, In fact, I know what the next episode of the Dark Groups podcast will be. Most likely not the puppet. <sighs> the puppet, despite the image shown, does not have lemon and lime color stripes. On its arms. <laughs> <laughs> however, <laughs> however, however, I think the puppet, the puppet just wanted a night out. <laughs> Ennard, Ennard's mask, uh, which we know must have come from. I feel a, like we're helping him write an a, email to like his <laughs> uh, use animatronic, uh. Does in capital and bold have <laughs> lemon <laughs> and lime stripes on his hat? I'm trying not to sound. I'm trying not to sound really petty here. I'm I'm going for a more informational tone. Uh, so most, so so in conclusion, <laughs> Ennard is uh most likely the real bearer of the coils the clown bearer <laughs> name um this has been another inky ink ted also oh. also you could write something uh in the sister location cut scene michael afton says father so it must also. be his father also, in Elizabeth tab. in sister location oh, says yes, daddy, therefore William Afton has to be her daddy. Oh, so I don't like your tone. <laughs> what? <laughs> I said he doesn't like your tone. <laughs> okay. Can we end the video, please? <laughs> I want to go cry. The comment is posted, boys. Go get it. But we can do that off camera. So. Oh boy. Thank you so much it. for watching this. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. This has been a Dark Rooms reaction.
Bye-bye. Oh, it's gosh. definitely been a reaction. Bye-bye, I'm ending the video. Goodbye. <laughs> it's been a reaction, and in Inky's case, an action. An action. I'm taking action, yeah. everybody. Find oh, the comment, no. like it. Right. Oh, See you later. No. Bye.